Mosasaurs, a group of marine squamates closely related to today's lizards and snakes, achieved a great deal of diversity during the time they were around during the latter half of the Cretaceous, with them having a worldwide distribution at their height. Among the most derived of these animals was an animal known as Plotosaurus, which showcases some remarkable adaptations to aquatic life and its habits more so than all other known members of their group. Remains of these animals were first discovered from the Upper Cretaceous of Fresno County, California, in the Merino Formation in 1918 by Oakland residents Herman Walker, followed by additional fieldwork in the 1930s. A series of bones were found in 1937, ranging from a pair of caudal vertebrae to a partial skeleton. Said partial skeleton consisted of a complete skull, 18 articulated vertebrae and an interclavicle, four ribs and the associated fragments of the latter. In the August of the same year, a second skeleton, even larger than the one found previously, was collected by joint UC Berkeley California State University Fresno Party while excavating an elasmosaur fossil in the Panoche Hills around 40 miles southeast of the first skeleton. Found by Professor William Tucker, this find was far larger than the previous one, with it consisting of an articulated series of 54 dorsal, pygal, and caudal vertebrae. Their bones came under the study of paleontology director Charles Camp, who named the new genus as a form of mosasaur. In his research, he particularly noted the highly derived aquatic adaptations they possessed, that appears far more specialised than other mosasaurs, something that will be talked about more, and calling them, quote, the most advanced genus yet described in the family Mosasauridae. He named the genus Colpasaurus, meaning bay lizard, with the type species of Benisoni being named in honour of high school student Alan Benison, who helped to discover the first bones of the animal in 1937. He also identified a second species which he named Colpasaurus tuckeri, after the previously mentioned professor, William Tucker. This genus name was however later found to be preoccupied by Anothosaur, which was unknown to camp, and so he renamed the genus to Plotosaurus, meaning swimmer lizards, in 1951. The status of two species of Plotosaurus was however not to last, as a 2008 study by paleontologist Johann Lindgren, Michael Caldwell and John Jatt re-describes them based on a re-examination of the specimens described by Camp who had since passed, and new fossils found afterwards. They found that much of the traits thought to differentiate between the two species were actually shares, being largely one and the same. The remaining distinct features were therefore found instead to be more than likely the results of intraspecific variation instead, which rendered P. tuckeri a junior synonym of P. benisoni, making the genus monotypic, consisting of only one species. Regarding the animal itself, Plotosaurus, being described as among the most, if not the most, derived mosasaur known from cladistic analyses, does have some very unique anatomy that makes them this way. Starting near the head, their cervical vertebral centra are deep, short and wide, suggesting that their already proportionally short necks may have reduced mobility, which in other aquatic animals helps in increasing axial stability towards the snout of the animals in their rostral ends. Further evidence of their increased mechanical heads and neck stability is seen in the rectangular and generally dorsoposteriorly inclined neural spines that gradually become taller along the cervical series, which forms a noticeable and conspicuous crest peaking on the last cervicals and the first thoracics. This so-called neural hump likely served as an enhanced surface area for their axial musculature, and at the same time also increasing the depth of their chest, further stabilising the head's neck and trunk regions in the axial plane. This also further helps to prevent rotational movements around the long axis of the animal, keeping them stable while moving through water columns. Their skulls are also quite striking, with them exhibiting a range of unique associations and in their overall structure. Much of the adaptations are however more easily correlated, and features deemed aquatic adaptations, in the case of Mosasaurus, remains more difficult to identify. Regardless, Plosasaurus possesses enlarged orbits and a longer and more narrow snouts when compared to other mosasaurs, being quite comparable to ichthyosaurs in this regard, and have been used extensively as proxies for the degree of aquatic adaptation seen in Plosasaurus. Their skulls appear to be relatively akinetic, with comparisons to other mosasaur taxa showing that they had a significantly lower ability to move their skull bones, extensively relative to each other, unique amongst the group. Long snouts and more conical grasping teeth that Plotosaurus possess have evolved independently in many lineages of aquatic tetrapods that prey on and specialise in small fish and cephalopods, something further supported by the presence of small-sized fish remains being found in the visceral regions of the holotype and preserved specimens. Their loss of movement in both their quadrates and pterygoids, coupled with their small prey and piscivorous diet, suggests that elaborate intraoral processing of their food items was largely unnecessary 
as the prey was small enough to be swallowed whole, in comparison to other Mosasaur taxa, which we know to have targeted much larger prey items. The success of derived Mosasaurs like Plotosaurus was therefore likely a result of a dietary shift from the more generalist behaviour of early forms to specialists as seen here. Plotosaurus shared its environment with a rich fauna of other large Mosasaurs, from Plesiotylosaurus, Mosasaurus and Prognathodon, and so their ability to niche partition allowed them to more easily access bountiful resources that were harder for these other genera to obtain. Their postcranial remains show that Plotosaurus was a very effective swimmer, being a coringiform and potentially even thunniform in nature, where propulsion is concentrated around the posterior end of the tail, and just at the caudal fin respectively, something which is seen in tuna. Their caudal fin inferred to be similar to that of other mosasaurs that preserve their shark-like, semi-lunate tail flukes would have given them large, propulsive qualities, with the extensive fusion in their spine helping them to remain stable, and their fusiform body shape allowing them to reduce drag as they moved. Contrary to most other mosasaurs, Plotosaurus appears to have lived in deeper, more open waters when contrasted with their relatives, with them being able to cruise for longer distances over water without exerting as much energy. Additional modifications have also been observed in their tails, with Plotosaurus having an estimated number of pygal vertebrae, 28 through 37, the ones occurring at the tail, being accompanied by a very low number of intermediate caudals, 3 to 6. Other genera such as Clodastes, Plasticarpus and Tylosaurus generally have 4 to 8 pygals, and over 20 intermediate caudals. In extant fusiform and thunniform swimmers, their powerful tails are also balanced by long pectoral fins, which is also the case with Plotosaurus, being the proportionally longest in Mosasauridae. With time, Plotosaurus and their relatives may well have yielded fully thunniform animals if the sudden KPG extinction events hadn't taken place, which unfortunately concludes their fascinating story of being among the most aquatically adapted tetrapods of the Mesozoic. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whatever that may be.